Now here are three reasons how Emma Raducanu beat Noskova in her first ever French Open victory. Now to be fair, it was her only French Open, but it's still an important one. Now, so the three reasons are this. Consistency, aggressiveness when it counted, and a little bit of a secret sauce that you might want to stick around for. But getting into the consistency part, and by the way, I should mention that this was a match of small margins. I mean, just to give you an example, now Raducanu's first serve winning percentage was at 64%, Noskova at 62 Second serve winning percentage for Raducanu, 50%, Noskova at 47 So for the first two sets, it could not have been any closer. I mean, there was a point where Raducanu was just a couple points away from being down a set in a break, but she didn't get broken in that set. So, talking, taking a look at consistency first. Now, for Raducanu, and I think the reason why she did this is because the last few months she's been She's been struggling with the form a little bit, and I think she hasn't been as consistent as she would like to be. So we saw her having that incredible U.S. Open run where she was super aggressive, and she did play a very aggressive style, but I think she wasn't very consistent with her aggressive style lately, so I think she was a little bit more trying to be consistent and feel a way into it, but sometimes that cost her. So being consistent is a little bit of a balancing act. Being consistent, you want to try and obviously be consistent and make less errors. However, if you just hit that ball back in the court, you may end up in trouble. So for, for her, we saw her trying to, let me draw a slightly better shape than that, but we saw Raducanu trying to aim for those big margins, meaning she wanted to try and hit that ball deep if she could, but stay away from the lines. Now, when she was able to keep it deep and when she was able to keep it out of the Noscova strike zone, she did fairly well with it. However, at some points, especially towards the end of that first set, she ended up being a little too passive with it, and she ended up hitting more of those balls a little bit shorter, where Noskova now was able to step in more and really use those aggressive ground strokes. Now here is a great example of Noskova staying close to that baseline and really being aggressive throughout the end of that first set. And, you know, to be fair, like, towards the end of that set, she was just on fire. I mean, hitting this shot down the line when you're in that position is a really tough one to pull off, but she was definitely feeling very confident because Raducanu was getting a little passive on some of her shots. But also, as part of Raducanu being a little too passive on some of those, she didn't really hold her ground well on the baseline, but instead she was, she was actually moving back further and further and further, and... Because of that, it leaves a big opening. And Noskova, by the way, she has an excellent drop shot. Now, here's a great example of Noskova using the Raducanu positioning, being far back in the court, and adding a little bit of that finesse. So if, if we just take a look at this again, take a look at where Noskova is positioned and take a look at where Raducanu is positioned. Now, in this case, we see Raducanu well behind the baseline, and we see Noskova well inside that baseline. This is just a perfect example to take advantage of a short ball and use that variety, hit that drop shot when your opponent is very far back and the distance that they would have to cover to run that drop shot is very large. And we saw her use that really well on quite a few occasions. So the fact that Raducanu was hitting a little bit shorter in the court and she was a little further back and getting a little too passive, it allowed Noskova to dictate the rallies now, really trying to use the direction, trying to hit that ball off the court, but also use the short court for that drop shot. So Noskova took, I mean, she really took um, took the chance and took the opportunities when they were presented late in the first and even sometimes early and mid in the middle of the second set. Now, the second reason though, before I go into that, go ahead and smash like and subscribe. It would mean the world to me. But also, check out some of the other videos on my channel that are going to be guaranteed to help you level up your game. Now, the second reason is this, and that is aggressiveness. I know we just talked about Raducanu being too passive. However, she was able to be a little bit more aggressive when she really needed to. So, especially towards the end of that second set, we saw Raducanu actually try to step up to the baseline and playing a lot more like she did when she had that incredible run at the US Open. So we, we saw her trying to be a little bit more along that baseline. And when you do that, when, you're, when you stay close to the baseline, it's a much more aggressive position because not only are you taking time away because you're taking the ball sooner rather than later, 
but also it just makes it much easier for you now to step into the chord and really be aggressive. And we saw her doing that towards the end of that second set. She was swinging a little bit more freely. She was being more aggressive with her ground strokes. As a result, Noskova wasn't able to dictate play as often. Now for a player like Noskova, and by the way, I really enjoy watching her because she does bring quite a bit of variety to the game. But for Noskova, for a majority of her shots where she's really trying to be aggressive with them, you want to try to keep that ball out of her strikes. And so meaning really try to use direction to move Noskova out of her comfort zone. And typically for most aggressive players, they love being along the baseline and they love really teeing off on those balls that are maybe like, let's say belly, but anywhere between hip and chest height, I would say. So you want to do your best to get that ball out of the strike zone. And we saw a lot of Connor using direction a little bit. We also saw her using a little bit more height. So she tried to add a little bit more spin to her shots, getting that ball to bounce up a little bit higher, making it a little tougher for Noskova to really tee off on those. So getting it out of her strike zone, really, really important part, which brings us in the third reason. And that is the mental perseverance. So we, we talked about Raducanu being too passive and that getting her into trouble, but now being more aggressive, getting her out of trouble. But then we also have to talk about the last thing, and that is the mental perseverance part. Now for Raducanu, she doesn't have a whole lot of match experience at the professional level because she's only been here for a year. Now she's achieved something incredible in that year. However, she is still missing a little bit of that consistency, especially in her confidence. So I think this was a great confidence booster because she was pushed really hard in this match. And sometimes when you push that hard and you come out for the better at the end of it, I think that definitely will give her some confidence for the rest of the tournament. However, the mental perseverance part, I think was a really, really important part. And we saw that in the third set. And at the beginning, it was pretty close, but then we just saw Ronald Kano being a little bit more comfortable. She's being very calm and collected, even though, you know, it was, it's a really, really tough match. But once we saw her kind of stepping in and being a little bit more aggressive, we saw that confidence take over. Now, here's a great example of Raducanu swinging through the ball very comfortably and confidently, I should say, really putting Noskova in more of the defensive spot. So this is just a great little example here. If we take a look at two quick things, number one is really trying to get Noskova on the move, getting Noskova out of, out of her comfort zone a little bit, as you can see on this shot. And as a result, she just hits that ball kind of neutral, back in the court pretty neutrally. And then Raducanu, again, taking a little more initiative on the next shot here, where she's really kind of stepping into the ball and swinging through it. So this kind of confidence, I think, really will help her in the next match. And I, I just want to give some credit to Noskova here as well. And I was surprised to hear that she was only 17 and playing at that level. So I do think we're going to hear more from her. So overall, a great match. And if you enjoyed it, go ahead and smash like and subscribe. Now, if you want more great videos, go ahead and either click this video or this video to level up your game.